Rev up your engine! Okay, I'm gonna show you a common problem. Customer here drove through some deep water on the passenger side, check engine lights on, and it's not running right. Now, as you might imagine, water and electricity, especially computer systems, do not mix that well. Realize your computer, all those sensors in a car work on a five volt reference signal. Not much power, very low amperage, maybe a few thousands of an amp power. Any electrical system part gets water on it, you can get problems from corrosion, or just plain the water's there and it inhibits the flow of electricity. So, as you can see under the hood, it's all kinds of electronics. He went over on this side. Of course, water can splash anywhere, but we gotta figure out what's wrong. Now, thankfully, the check engine light is on. So, we'll turn the key on, and we'll see what it is. And in this case, it kind of sneak it. There's a little access panel here. We take it off, there's the OBD port, so we can plug it in. Of course, I have it upside down, you'd know that. Now, we'll see what's going on. Now, since the customer tells me the light wasn't on until after he went through the water, we know that's gonna have something to do with the problem. And as we see, it's got two codes. And we have cylinder number two misfire, and it's twice. So the problem is cylinder number two. Isn't modern technology grand? My grandfather's day, that uh, you had to pinpoint everything by yourself, take a lot of guesswork. This tells us cylinder number two misfire. Checking the freeze frame data now, it's gonna tell us exactly what happened. And here's when it happened, gives us all the information. And here's all the information. Now we can see, it happened when he was going 47 miles an hour, and the short-term fuel trim, it was adding 9% fuel, but the long-term fuel trim is zero. Now, that might not seem much to you, but it gave me a real good idea. When I tripped the code, it was going 47 miles an hour, and it had to add about 9% fuel, meaning it wasn't getting enough fuel. So it was adding fuel. Well, guess what? These Kias are notorious for having problems with the fuel injection wiring anyway. So we'll pull this stupid cover off. There it goes. And realize that this is cylinder number two. You go from the front, one, two, three, four. This injector, I'm assuming, got wet. Like I said earlier, computer systems work on very low voltage, very low amperage, few thousands of an amp. You get any kind of water, fuel injection wiring, you can make them not work right. So what I'm gonna do is spray them with some electrical spray cleaner. Now, you can buy electrical spray cleaner that says electrical spray cleaner. Well, I happen to have a case of this mass airflow sensor. Well, the mass airflow sensor is electronic. It's pretty much the same stuff. It doesn't leave any residue. So I'm using this MAF spray sensor because I'm too lazy to go to the store and buy a can that says spray electrical cleaner. This is the same stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze the number two and pull it off. And we're gonna clean everything. The injector, where it plugs in, the connector. Do a really good job. You might as well do the number two ignition coil too. Maybe it got wet. Now in the old day, we used to use WD-40 when stuff got wet, because things were simpler. Then, they didn't have ignition coils on each spark plug. They had a distributor and spark plug wires. If the wires got wet, you could pull the wires off. Then you could spray them with WD-40, because that displaces water but understand you got thousands of volts of electricity on an old-fashioned spark plug wire on the ignition coil you only have that little bit of power coming at the top the thousands of volts are deep down inside and in this case you could be an absolute fanatic if you wanted to take this off but this has a big rubber seal on it and odds are no water got inside there but let's say I go through some water and you're in the middle of nowhere heck get some wd-40 it doesn't hurt electronics and it does displace water so if you got water and it's shorting stuff off you can spray the wd-40 all around then just get a rag and wipe the excess off and often that will stop your problem. That's what they used to do back in the day. If somebody went through water, the first thing we do, we just get some WD-40. We spray the distributor cap and all the wires, then it absorbed the water. Then we'd wipe it down with the rag. Then we'd start the car and drive it. But modern cars are a little more complex than that. So you're better off with spray electrical cleaner or this MAF spray sensor cleaner, which is the same stuff. 
You don't want to use stuff like carburetor cleaner because that can conduct electricity and short stuff up. You want to use stuff that's made for electronics. Well now we'll start it up and see what it sounds like. As we go inside, we'll start her up. Starts right up. I did push the button on my computer to reset the check engine light. It's been reset, so it's not on now. So we'll take it for a good half hour ride and see how it does. You want to do a good road test where you drive in town five, 10 minutes, on the highway 10, 15 minutes. That'll give it a good road test to see if anything's going to come up. Then we'll just look at the data after the road test. And you especially want to accelerate harshly like this because you want to stress the motor to make sure the ignition and the fuel system is working at top efficiency. If you road test things like a little baby, you might not stress the engine enough. The more you stress the engine, the more any minor problem is going to show up on both the scan tool and the check engine light. Now we're back home. Let's plug the scan tool in again. Well, the check engine light stayed off. Look at the live data. And if we check it out here, we'll see the short-term fuel trim is now minus 1.6 or minus 0.8. There, minus 0.8. Zero. And when it tripped that code for misfire on cylinder number two, it was adding fuel. It was like eight, nine percent it was adding. Now it's either subtracting a little or it's perfect. Seems that that fixed the problem. So the next time you drive through water and your car starts running poorly, now you know how to figure out what it is and fix it yourself. Just pray you don't suck water into the engine past the air filter because that can hydro lock your engine bend the piston rods, and goodbye engine. So be careful around water. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Mr. Mech Martinez says, Scotty, what you take on a Buick LeSabre with a V6 3800 motor? Those are great motors. Those motors can run forever. The rest of the vehicle is okay. It's not fantastic. It's a GM vehicle, and their quality has been going downhill gradually over the last 30 years. So you know, they're not the greatest vehicles in the world. Those are great engines. But if you can get a used one cheap enough, it could be a good knockaround car. Guy that sells me auto parts. He bought one from one of my customers for a thousand bucks. He's still driving a stupid thing around. So what the heck? You want a car, knock around car for driving places? If it's cheap and it runs good now, it can still last a while. Just don't pay much for one. They have no resale value. Paul Valene says, Scotty, got to know what Tahoe. 4x4 four four feels like the brakes are on. Is it the transfer case? Okay, the first thing you want to do, when you think they're on, drive it when you think it's on, pull it in, jack it up in the air. See if the brakes are on. <laughs> Maybe they're sticking on. Who knows? Now, if they are, then check the rear versus the front. And if the front are real tight, it could easily be the transfer case going up because normally it's just running on the rear. Now, if you only have it on the rear and not the front four by fours when you're driving it, it doesn't stick. Odds are it is the transfer case. There's a lot of things that go on with those things. You want to jack it up and see first. You don't always want to go with the most expensive thing. It's like the guys that say, oh man, I think I need a computer in my car. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Don't start with the most expensive thing. Figure the other things out first. Mike Hawk says, Scotty, should I trade my 2013 BMW 328i four-cylinder sedan for a 2020 Toyota Corolla hatchback manual transmission? Definitely trade in. Yeah, I would definitely trade. You're not going to get much for a BMW. Nobody wants to use BMWs. Well, whatever you can get for it, what the heck. The Toyota might last you forever. The BMW is seven years old, and it's soon to be, if not already, an endless money pit and unless you like falling into endless money pits I would get rid of it as soon as possible. Jason says Scotty can I change the alternator pulley for more alternator power? You can make it smaller or bigger if you can find one but of course then your fan belts might not fit right. In most cases the alternators on vehicles work perfectly fine the way that they were designed and unless you're sitting there idling all day long your engine's spinning fast enough to charge you with any normal design these days. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.